All right, guys, now we're going to talk about the uh, channels and attributes uh, of Maya. In other words, uh, how does Maya actually build objects, okay? Uh, it's quite simple, really. Uh, it's not very complicated in terms of uh, a concept, but it definitely gets complicated as time goes by. So let's just create a, a torus real quick here again. And as you see, as you can see here, we've got the channel box here. Let me just tear it out for you. And we've got the translate, the rotate, the X, Y, and Z, and the scales, much like the inspector in Unreal Engine 4. And we could also obviously modify these both from here, right, there's a barrel for example, uh, or from the actual channel box itself. Now it's a little bit more like you can do it with steps here, otherwise you'd have to use the steps hotkey uh, in Maya, like J for example, I want you to do the same thing. Anyway. Um, there's loads of stuff here in, in the channel box. It's very intuitive because in the inputs, and the inputs are essentially every every command you give to it. For example, currently, the last thing I did was create a, a torus. So if we go into the torus here, we can select, you can see the radius for it, right? You can see uh, how big there's a torpedo right now, but uh, you, you can see how you can actually modify the object even though you've already created it. I can max out the sub D's on it if you want to go nuts. Uh, so what's the big deal about the inputs? Well, the cool thing about the inputs is that you can get a lot of them stacked together. So in my case, maybe I wanted to go and get, you know, do some smoothing. So if I were to smooth it, which would essentially create a subdivision, maybe stack like I don't know, five sub, D, sub D's running on it. Uh, I think I just froze it. No, I didn't. So as you can see, I stacked a bunch of stuff here. Now, this is a very high detail, very high definition object. It, it, this is obviously overkill and it's you shouldn't do it. It's completely useless. It doesn't do much. But essentially, I have another input here. So even if I forgot something, let's say I just, what else am I going to do? Oh, well, let's see. Maybe I should triangulate it, right? Make it even more complicated. So right now, I've got even more faces, even more objects. So I've got like a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of different stuff and I'm just freezing myself right now, yeah? Like there's literally, like this is as detailed as it can get. Like this is the most detailed, uh, I don't even know what it is, like a tunnel or an en engine or whatever of the world. In fact, it actually takes me more processing power just to select it, right, than to render the damn thing. <clears throat> but anyway. I'm going to select it now <clears throat> and what we're going to do is since we've lost our ability to set it up we actually have to click here and we can remove a lot of subdivisions and go back to one for example and now this is a lot more manageable and you might imagine well this is very nice and dandy but what's the big deal about them anyway well as you keep working you're going to be stacking more and more inputs and at some point you're going to have trouble right because you can have more and more shapes and have more and more torses and by the way, one thing I, I, I failed to mention is that the channel box is directly re related to the attribute box and it's actually like a simplified version of it. In fact, you could, you could, bu you could stack a bunch of attributes to the channel box um, that you'll be able to, uh, let's say, uh, modify stuff that otherwise isn't modifiable. So uh, let's see, maybe we've got the channels, uh, channel control. As you can see right now, in the channels, we've only got nine, ten channels all together, but there's a bunch of other stuff. Like, like, look how many channels we have. And these are just the default channels. You can have your own channels. You can create your own attributes, right? Uh, so it's, it's, it's quite complicated uh, once it gets... This is like the front end of the store, right? You only see the, the cooked pizza. You don't see all the ingredients in the pizza. Uh, so as such, it's nice to... To know how to use this. Now when it comes to the attribute editor this is where all of the stuff that this object is made of is available. If you notice here we got the poly torus with poly smooth surface and the poly triangulate. If you take a look here at the attribute editor we got the poly triangulate, poly smooth ways and poly surface. We also have the initial shading group and the fog. Now the shading group is basically a connect collection of materials that are going to be material uh, going to be basically rendered. And the fong is your material that belongs to one of the shading groups. Uh, so you got a volume material, you got a displacement material. Uh, obviously, you can you know edit these. I don't use them. I don't bother with this in this case because 
uh, we're gonna use uh, Substance or Unreal Engine's Material uh, Editor to get this stuff done uh, for texturing. But uh, it, it's nice to have it around because you can set up different materials for um, you know for different zones. Like if this was if this was for example, uh, if I were to set up something for um, uh, Substance Painter, for example, right? I'd get the cube, let's say, and well, I don't want this. Oh crap, where's the cube? Where's the cube? Where's the cube? This will actually give you a good opportunity to see, give me a good opportunity to show you guys something. But anyway, um, here's my cube, and let's say I want to have this face transparent. Ah, balls, I forgot to, my freaking hotkeys are wonky again. But anyway, uh, go to face mode, and let's select the following here. We can actually assign a different material. Or we could do it from here, obviously. Assign a new material. Uh, we can create a new Fong. And this is Fong 2. We're going to call it... Just keep it Fong 2, I suppose. It doesn't matter. I can select the type, but let's just leave it at Fong. You can have, a direct, you can have it as a DirectX 11 shader. But uh, DX11 is uh, you know, a, a little bit more complicated than just regular Fong. So we need some different files. Uh, which are usually written in you know in C++ code which is you know you just don't bother with it all right just stick to the regular stuff and unfortunately I actually can't I can't redo I can't reset this can I oh god okay let's just do this again let's go and select the Fong all right so there's your Fong Fong SG for something whatever is bugged out but anyway as you can see we got the surface here selected and there's your Fong uh, DirectX we actually I don't know I think you should I think there was a way to delete this point here not sure what's supposed to happen but uh, let's assign a different color like green I don't know yellow let's assign it yellow right if I should be able to assign yellow oh yes yellow there we go so we got yellow. Unfortunately, as you can see, this Fong one is being shared by other. Um, um, like I just edited the Fong one uh, uh, material, but I assigned a different material to this here face. As you can see, they're different colors. Now I can assign an existing material like Fong three, which would be another color, which would be probably something like red, and would be something like red in terms of or purple or magenta or whatever. And it could be slightly transparent, maybe a lot transparent. And as you can see, I have just assigned a transparent color, right, to a object or just to the face of an object. Now, when I export this and we import it into another program, it could actually, it will recognize this as another material and you can add something different here. Let's say if this was a text rate, you needed to project something, right, like a mini map maybe, right, or maybe some kind of TV, like if this is a TV, this would be a prime example of how to make a TV, you have a box, a bounding box, obviously not like this, but this would be your TV frame, and this would be your TV screen, however, you'd need to define a separate material so that you can actually put a texture of a video there, like you put a video on it, right, you can't just put like a, um, right, I'm going off topic, the point is that in this, in this, with this attribute editor here, you can actually see everything that you're shape or material is made from okay which is very handy because it allows you to use you know settings that are otherwise hard you know hard to get you know or almost always unavailable like mesh controls right you got the UV different sets tangent space which nobody knows what it does but in general just leave it right-handed because they share um, like they have different names for that uh, but you've got different options like the Bali cube you can actually have the extra attributes if you have if you add your own right um, you can have the, um, just select this thing here, for example, is the smooth torus. Uh, you can have the different display nodes, like you can actually uh, change the color of the outline or maybe even uh, give the drawing overrides when you're selecting different edges on it, right? Uh, for selection stuff, like there's plenty of things in the attribute editor that I find to be, uh, you know, very fancy, but you only need to use it like once. And most of the times uh, you'd be playing around in the attribute editor when it comes to vertex animation and joint animation, right? You've got the limit information here about the translate. For example, you'd, you know, minimum and maximum of X, Y, and Z. And uh, if you think about it, you actually, you can actually get the, uh, where's the channel control now? Oh God, 
Where is the channel control? I just I just had a freaking channel control out. Okay, let's do this the hard way. Uh, so as you can see, we still have the exact same thing here. Where is uh, max rotation, max scale, max limit, right? You've got all these things. You can enable them, add them here, and they're going to pop up over here as well on the torus. All right. Uh, so in general, anything that's hidden from the channel box, you can find it in the attribute box. Most of the time, though, the stuff that you need in the channel box is going to be freshly available for you. And even if you don't, you can always open the channel control and add something to it instead of looking and digging around like like a, some kind of mole, right, looking for the damn uh, uh, like limits. And as you can see, there's plenty and plenty and plenty of information here. And that's just one tab. You've got loads of tabs. Not to mention, like I said, you can create your own attribute, right? You can create a new attribute that has a different name and, you know, whatever it is, a Boolean integer string and whatever it does, like maybe it toggles visibility or curves a ring finger or, I don't know, makes the character flap, whatever floats your boat. Uh, but, it, you know, anytime you make a new, a new attribute, this is where it's going to be at. And you can uh, add it to um, the channel, uh, channel box. And the channel box itself is very fancy because you can open... Uh, oh, there we go. Channel control. Freaking finally. The attribute editor, in other words, is the stuff that, uh, you know, it's open right here. Uh, but with the attribute editor, you can actually create your own attributes, like I said. You can edit over the existing ones if you... I don't think you can edit the, the, the default ones, but if you've created some before, you can edit them now. Uh, but like I said, we're not going to talk about this just yet. Just understand that you've got options when it comes to uh, controlling your um, objects, okay? You've got your channel control, you've got your, your uh, attribute editor, and they're both very fine and dandy, and you can always have others, right? Like material attributes in our case would be the Fong, right? So if I select this, I don't even know what's gonna pop up because I've never used it. So let's just go and be the daredevil. And God damn it, I forgot that the freaking F1 and 4 still doesn't work the way I want it to. So let's go to face, right? And uh, go to material attributes, see what happens. Well, it's gonna go drop us directly to the Fong, which is, which is quite nice instead of having the whole thing set up here, right? Uh, so let's select the cube and we're back to the torus. Now obviously there's other ways to get to these and I will show them to you in later videos but for now just make sure make sure to um, well uh, make sure to, to understand how the channel box works all right um, yeah that's basically it. oh wait there's one more thing I almost I almost forgot I almost forgot let me just grab again the uh, the channel box here uh, right important thing once you keep piling up the inputs right uh, there's also you might also have outputs for example uh, something you could output one of your custom made attributes and those attributes could be inputted into a, another object right to be driving it let's say oh I don't know maybe you have some kind of robot that you know whenever it farts it also squats or whenever it squats it also farts right whatever it's some kind of attribute that um, enables uh, like that drives other things all right uh, but anyway once you've got a bunch of stuff here you might find yourself that it starts bugging out especially once you start adding deformers and different sorts of curvatures and when you start animating right this mo when you start animating most of the attributes that you use to most of the inputs that you used which are essentially functions by the way um, which are actually pieces of code which you could you could model just by programming if you want which is crazy um, but anyway uh, if if you have too many they're not gonna play nice with each other especially once you start animating so a lot of the times and people will say it all over the all over the place if you have a problem I want to save if you have a problem just delete all the history delete the history delete the history delete the history and what the history what delete history does is basically uh, reset your object right it's gonna delete all the inputs and it's gonna keep the current shape of it so if I go right now and go to edit and we go to delete all by type and we're gonna go delete history this is what everybody says to do by the way if you go to just first thing delete all by type history so we delete the history and boom you got nothing left you got the fong right uh, like this is basically like, everything is gone here we just nothing is left however the results are still there if you don't if you notice that this is still yellow even though we have the Fong 1. Uh, Alright, this is the Fong 1 because I added it. But anyway, uh, the, the triangulation is still there. It's still smooth. It's still like all the stuff that I just added to it, the three, the three modifiers that I just added to it, they're still there. Okay, so 
what would happen if I triangulated it again? I'm not sure. I, I don't think it would triangu triangulate. Uh, but I could maybe qua uh, quadrangulate it, right? Let's see if I could quadrangulate it back. Well, there you go. Perfect. So I quadrangulated it. And there, there we go. We have another input. And we can have quadrangula quadrangulations based on different angles. So uh, maybe it didn't do just the right job. Maybe something went wrong. But notice that I can no longer get rid of... Um, faces because I don't have the input like I'd have to actually simplify the mesh like reduce it by 50% maybe right and the, like this works right now because it's a very simple object right and I don't have like they're all very nicely aligned to each other but believe you me once you have something a lot more complex this is not going to look nice at all right like sometimes you're going to have problems with reduction and you can have some serious deformities and some serious um, like it's going to try to keep to the shape but you know better safe than sorry so anyway most of the time that is totally fine to delete the history the biggest problem though is that sometimes a lot of people since a lot of people tell you to delete all history all by type blah 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 it's a blanket solution right don't do it if you have something that has too many inputs delete by type history just on the object okay However, be very careful when you're deleting history in general. I would suggest always delete the non-deformer history first. That's pretty much the safe option even if you do it all by type, right? All by type, non-deformer history, or even the channel, static channels, a bunch of stuff you could delete as well. However, the non-deformer history is imperative that you do not delete, that you, that's what you delete because IK handles, um, um, vertex clusters, right, lattices, all that jazz. These are deformers and skin weights as well, I believe, are deformers. So once you have your whole character nicely set up and done, I know you don't know what a skin weight is, but once you realize what it is, you will, fit, you know, if, listen, if you delete the history when you've already done a character, you'll be pissed because you'll essentially delete all the work you've just done. So make sure to delete only the non-deformer history whenever you're doing something. Only if, if even after that, you still have a problem, then you have a deformer problem, then you know either, either you fucked something up or, the, or Maya fucks up, and then you're really screwed and you're gonna have to leave the, his, the history and redo it again, all right? But in general, there's a reason there's a non-deformer history right there. So use that, and I, would, I, rec I recommend just having a short key, a shortcut set up for it, all right? Anyway, um, now that I've told you the most important bit, I'll just dock this thing right back in because it's taking a hell of a lot of space. Maybe I should have done that earlier. Um, I believe that's all you need to know when it comes to channel boxes and attributes. Now, there's a little bit more in-depth stuff here when you can actually go really deep, right? You can you can uh, create your own stuff. There's a turtle. I don't even know what the turtle damn thing is. Let me see the turtle attribute spreadsheet. Yeah, um, I think that's for rendering i'm not entirely sure it's i think it's for rendering but uh it doesn't matter in our case because we're not going to be doing any of that we need only simple stuff and like i said i'm not a pro so i have no idea about half the stuff that's maya capable for and believe me listen maya is a very powerful tool it's a whole specialization all right don't go too deep into this stuff try to be uh productive and not very tunnel tunnel minded about maya because it's there's a lot to learn and you don't need anything to learn to learn everything because a lot of the stuff in Maya is done for production even though LT is very limited uh, sorry not limited but basically a cut version of Maya right and they say that they added most of the stuff that's needed for creating developing games there's a lot of tools that no, not only overlap between other pieces of software where we, where they are focused on it, they're easier to do, right? They're easier to use, uh, and they sometimes produce better quality results. But also remember that this is used for game development in general, all right? And not every game uh, needs the same level of graphical fidelity as yours, for example, right? So your game, our game anyway, the one we're working on, Wormy Volley, is uh, is going to be very simple. Right? We don't need to have a lot of objects. We don't need to have swooping cameras. We don't need like massive explore. Like there's nothing that will, will, we don't have to have any cinematics made in Maya because you can make cinematics in Maya quite simply, quite easily. All we need from Maya is a, a model, right? A UV map and an animation, right? 
Quite simply, that's all we need from Maya. Nothing else, no cameras, no lights, nothing. You're gonna do that, you're gonna get that done in Unreal Engine 4. All you need from Maya to learn is how to model, how to animate, right? And how to, how to UV map. That's all you need. The rest of the stuff is done off the, you know, off the software. So don't let all this boggle you down. Just get used to modeling, all right? Do something fancy. Maybe, I don't know, recreate your monitor. Right, with the with the current skill set, with the current knowledge that you have, you could recreate your monitor. Just try to recreate it, right? Create a get a cube, open start start with a cube, right? Maybe get a second cube, maybe raise this thing up, right? There, your monitor has begun. Maybe you know how to select edges, right? So you can select the edges. There you go. You can select different edges. Maybe scale them down a little bit or scale them up or whatever in this case. So maybe in this case, let's scale it up, move it up, move it back. There, there's your monitor halfway done. You do the rest, right? Or maybe I should have done it on the opposite side because, because of course I should have, because this is where the transparency thing is, right? So I'm going to scale this up then. There, Right, and there's your half half of your monitor is done. All you need to do is add a stand and whatever is you're you're hooked up uh, up to. So, like I said, it's 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 not pretty. All right, the starting starting uh, steps are definitely not pretty in this uh, software. However, they're definitely manageable. Anyway, uh, that's all you guys need to know for channels and attributes, at least for starters. I'll see you guys next time when we clean this damn clutter because it looks like shit. At least that's what I think it does look like. Right? See ya. Bye-bye.